Before we start, I just wanted to mention that in this video you'll see my new-ish map that shows the waterways of the Fenlands. It's now available to order from our website, which I've linked below. It covers the River Great Ouse, the River Neen, as well as the middle level navigations which are featured in this video. All my other waterways maps are available on the website too. Good morning. Good morning. George is up there eating his meal. We are hungry. Oh, we haven't had breakfast. We got up, we walked into Ramsey. Ramsey's really nice. Yeah, we're basically at the western, northwestern end of Ramsey. Uh, there's a large amount of construction going around here. There's Tesco over there. It, uh, it, it, it was moved up here years ago. Basically, the Victorians took the river that was down there and the docks and then covered them over and created the three tunnels that you'll see in a little while. Going over the, what's called the White, I think. The Great White. The Great White. Yes. Terrible band. And, um, yeah, effectively, they covered that over and moved the dock up here, uh, which is nice. However... <laughs> it's not nice now. Um, no, it's, it's, I mean, it could be, it could use a little bit of love and care, but the bigger problem is... <laughs> It could use widening in one side, but just a little bit. Yeah, because the book didn't say how wide it is here and how like longer boats could turn. And there's questions as, as to whether a 56 foot narrow boat can we'll, turn. We'll make it. Yeah. 56, 57. Yeah, I think I think the book actually did say 58 foot or something like that. Oh well, well Michael's nervous, and for Michael to be nervous, it means that. Yeah, I, I have low confidence. It's wide the geometry here. It's wide enough here, but, yeah. but to, that do, is to the, do the swing. The only point that matters <laughs> is the narrowest is, point. Is the narrowest point. Because the only point on the swing that matters is the one is is you know, is 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 that is the radius of this circle, our boat. Because if it isn't, we're gonna go thunk and um, try and figure out how to do it backwards. the other way. Well the other possibility is to put the nose down into the tunnel yeah. and then try and back over yeah. here and utilize that but then we still have to swing we the same way the so yeah anyway George has finished his breakfast so uh, maybe we should do it yeah okay so what we're gonna do uh, I'm gonna get on the back we're gonna untie the line at the back we're going to get our bumpers out uh, Joe is going to take the line at the front and as I push off and get on she's going to pull the nose in so that the nose is right in the apex of this um, 90 degree corner here and that will give me as much of a swinging radius as is possible so we should look knock steel and then we're going to go and explore some more of the middle level possibly backwards you can see just how tight the turn is we wouldn't be trying this on a boat any longer than 57 foot So that's a relief. We just made the turn, or we're still making it, but there was room. I think we had like a foot to spare. I don't think there was a lot. Um, so we can go forwards out of the like, not backwards. You just get a quick glimpse of the tunnels that Michael was talking about here. And that's the old crumbling mooring that we were on. The good news is that some new moorings have been installed since we visited. Somebody left a length of rope tied to a ring down there, so I got close to it and had to like shut off the engine, and then I just had to drift past it. And that was a little insight into the exciting conversations we have on the walkie talkies when we cruise. Highload is definitely one of those places where you wouldn't want to meet a boat coming the other way. There's not too much risk of that though, as the middle level navigations are pretty quiet, especially waterways like this one that are not part of the route that links the Neen and the Ouse. These boats are moored at Bilfen Marina. This is one of only a couple of marinas that are located on the middle level. And there's the very narrow marina entrance. At 
the junction that Swans Head East on the Old River Neen and we turn west. We're actually going to end up back here at the junction later in the day on our way back to the moorings at Benwick. But first Michael wants to explore as far as we can on three other routes and they're the Great Ravelry Drain, Monk's Lode and New Dyke. Just after we make the turn, we reach Lodes End Lock. So we just got to the lock. Michael's just tying up on the lock landing. First time I've seen this, the lock is actually behind this massive fence and it's got a padlock on it, so you can't access it unless you've got a key. So hopefully we've got the right key. So this is the key we needed, luckily the lock keeper back at Salter's Load remembered to sell us one. The lock gates themselves are also padlocked. After all that effort to get into the lock, the drop is only actually a couple of inches. Here we're passing St Mary's Church and then it's under St Mary's Bridge. After we pass a small collection of houses, we're back to the pretty but very flat rural scenery. The course of the Old River Neen turns north here, but we're continuing west onto New Dyke, and this is another junction we'll revisit today, two more times. This is a junction with the Great Ravely Drain, and you've guessed it, we will be heading down there once we've returned from home and the end of the New Dyke. We'll have to see if we can fit under that very low bridge. This is the junction with Monk's Load, another one we've got to explore today. I can't say that it looks very interesting, but it's there and it's navigable, so we're going to navigate it. Just after the junction, there's some mooring posts for a very rural stop. We're about halfway along the New Dyke navigation now, so we're halfway to home. The further we go along, the narrower the waterway seems to get. It's 
we're just on the home straight to home and apparently there is a winding hole there so we're just hoping it's going to be big enough for us to turn around i think it's just around this corner So that's it. Well, this is our, I think it might be our 40th silver profile location, but I haven't done a count up, so I could be wrong. Yeah. Anyway, it's the last one on the integrated network that we've attempted to go to. It's the last one that we're actually going to reach with Perseverance. Um, yeah. Unless something very strange happens. <laughs> that's really sad. We're at home at the end of the new dike, which came off the old mean course which came off the 40-foot dike anyway we're here and uh and home there is a pub that's just over that way although um you know I'm not sure how well it's fared due to covid and everything uh it is obviously somewhat remote um we have made it to here and i gotta say I don't think very many people do. No, and honestly, <laughs> of all the um, middle-level routes that we've done so far in the last few days, this last section from the lock, really, yeah. has been the nicest. It's been the prettiest. I mean, possibly just because we could see more above the banks. but Yeah, but also just it is the watercourse itself is fairly pleasing yeah. the houses are nice there's some old it's there was an old windmill we passed that's just gorgeous it's ever so remote as well i think i've got a spider on me <laughs> yeah um yeah it's so remote like it's just literally just farmland and that's it yeah but it is funny to think that this is this is it this is the last solar propeller yeah so the, we've missed three now so one of them was the basing stoke which we visited before the silver propeller was a thing in yeah. 2017 but also we couldn't get to the end because of a landslip well and we could in theory travel all the way across the country to go you know up the down down to london up the thames get ourselves back to um the way get onto the basing stoke and we still wouldn't make it to the end without disassembling the solar panels now because yeah. we wouldn't fit under I'll the fleet bridge anymore. Higher than it was then. And so uh, we might be, there's um, day boats down there, so we might get a day boat and do that. Yeah, I'd like to do that. And the the other ones are the um, River Welland. Yeah, which we could have done this year, but the lock was out of action when we were there, and then we had our. We were, had to come across the wash, so we just missed that opportunity. Yeah, and last I checked, the lock, the lock is still out of action. Oh, really? It hasn't been lanced, and there's no. We, we way were to open thinking it. potentially of going back across the wash, and then up the Welland, but that's can't do that. If there's no point doing that, if we can't get up the Welland. Yeah. And I think that there is a trip boat up there that we could do that one on. But also, someone mentioned to us, the, um, someone we met in Boston, that they might know of someone whose boat we could use. Yeah. And so we're still going to try and figure out if that's a possibility. And then the last one was in York, which was another lock that was out of action. What was that river called? Well, it was the Blue Bridge, and it was the river... Um, Off the, the Yorkshire Ooze. Yeah, Fleet. No, not Fleet. It's... We're never going to remember it. I, I can never remember the I'll name of it. put the name of it here. It's about a mile long to a Sainsbury's that's all there is yeah, we walked it but we um, couldn't get through the lock yeah and and when we passed through there the bridge was undergoing some major reconstruction so the whole thing was blocked off and there are some rental boats up there but i don't know whether they'd let us go through the lock so we'll have to find out yeah but i don't see us taking perseverance all the way back to york i don't see us taking it all the way to the basing stoke and i don't see us going to, back to the welland on this boat so in, in any time soon yeah so this is this is the last one yeah but 40, until they add more or until we can get figure out how to get to scotland 40 out of 43 is not bad on the integrated integrated network oh yeah i don't think so i think we've done pretty well considering you have to do 20 to get the silver propeller yeah we've 40. effectively doubled it 
So we're waiting for our second silver propeller <laughs> or that gold or platinum propeller that we've been told about. I wonder if we can, can we get it. I wonder how many people still think that we actually get a propeller. I keep I keep wanting like a solid silver propeller. You know. <laughs> just just because. Perseverance only. Only Pers has a silver propeller. Perseverance, the only boat on the system that has a propeller that can kill werewolves. <laughs> Ah, so that's not the end of today. We are carrying on and of course there's a couple more dead ends that we need to go down. So there's Monk's Load that I think we can go down as far as Connington Fen Bridge. Yeah, which is only about a kilometre. Uh, hopefully we can turn there. Or it's I'm, not, I'm not going further than where we can turn. Okay. So if, if, I, if I head down there and I start, it starts narrowing, I'm just going to turn and, and call it. And then there's the Great Reveille Drain. Now that one's a little bit complicated because there's a short bridge which is shorter than anything we've been under today. Uh, when we passed it, it did look like we would clear it, mm. but we'll have to get up to close to it to see. Um, and it does continue south of there, but the map that the middle level navigation commission, commission provides... Says it's not navigable. Well, it shows it navigable up until there's this big rectangle. Uh. So that big rectangle is a park. So I'm not sure why there's a big rectangle there because it's <laughs> clearly not a giant rectangular piece of water. water. Um, but again, what we'll do is try and proceed through the bridge. It, it does look wide enough to turn. So it's another one where it's like, we'll proceed through the bridge and I will go no further than where I think I can turn. And then the third one... And I might be overestimating my ability to turn. The third one is the River Neen Old Course, north from Nightingale's Corner. But not far up there at all is the bridge that's 1.2 metres high, yeah. which is undoubtedly... Way too short. Unless, it's an exhibition bridge. Unless this book has got it wrong, because they're not that accurate. And, like, and I know the water levels change, but from bridge to bridge, they don't seem that... Yeah, it's not Comparison. consistent. However, um, Simon on... Um, Scholar Gypsy. Yeah, sorry. However, Simon on Scholar Gypsy, who's been around a lot of this, sent me some photos of Exhibition Bridge. I'm almost certain there's no chance we're making it under Exhibition <laughs> but Bridge. But we'll go and have a look. But we're going to go have a look. Anyway. I couldn't tell how wide that channel was. And again, it looks wide enough that I can spin around. She has no faith. <laughs> That well, is you understandable. You didn't think you could spit around this morning. Yeah, I know. You so didn't I, have I, high I, confidence. Yes. I, I, yes. I, I, but now I have high confidence. Anyway, back down up along the new dike to Monk's Load. Yes. Before the very minor current rams me into that guy's boat. Yeah, it's a bit sad. There's a. It is. There's a. It's it's uh, it's it's oh. not doing well. It's <laughs> decrepit. There we go. Yeah, but. Uh, I'd say he beat us to the silver propeller, but he didn't make it very much further. <laughs> We're actually going to end this video here and pick up this cruise in the next vlog. We should also confirm we've totaled up the number of silver propeller locations we visited and it's actually only 39, so we can't claim that second silver propeller just yet. We hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and for all the ongoing support.